from 2017, I very gradually went through from finishing prep at like 160, 165 pounds. Right. That gave me a long runway up to 205, yeah. basically. And I did do some mini cuts within that, right. probably more than I would in hindsight now looking at have recommended someone to do. Like there were yeah. times where I was like, I suppose for me, it was like a, like a point where it's not a terrible time to mini cut, but for the average person, like you would be mini right. cut, you'd be like, you're already pretty lean still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would have probably removed maybe one of those at least. So I think I did like three or something um, during that period of time, but I've written it somewhere on Instagram. It was the number of weeks. I was definitely, I think it was over 85% of my off season was in a surplus, Yeah, which is a really good chunk of time. So that's one big takeaway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's one thing that I do because like I have... I'm surprised by the number of clients who ask me if they should do a mini cut because mini cuts really only became more popular in the last few years. And, um, at, at least like by terminology and yeah. a lot of times I'm just like, no, like stop asking about a mini cut. Like not that, <laughs> that you should never do them, but I think they are, you know, people will put on a little bit of body fat and like, Oh, it's time to cut. Right. And it's like, dude, just keep pushing, you know, but at least yeah. you overall, you know, you had years of overall steady incline going up. So, yeah. And that's where I consider mini cuts are done right versus wrong. If someone's mini cutting to bring them back down to like the same body weight all the time, I think it's a surefire way to spin your wheels. Whereas yeah. if it is like you come up, come down a little bit, come up. So it's overall, yeah. if you zoom out, you're like, oh, that's a linear trend up. Mm -hmm. Eventually you're going to need a long extended cut. Yeah. Whereas I think the allure for a lot of people is like, oh, I'm just going to mass a mini cut forever and I'll mm -hmm. never need to do a long cut because long cuts suck and no one yeah. wants to do that. And I think that's a, you need a real long purposeful mass because it's yeah. such a slow process as a natural. Um, I just had Mike Isretel on for a QA and a and he was telling me how he gained, I don't know, it's like 15 pounds of muscle within a year. And I was like, man, it took me four years to gain less than that. It's yeah. just, and that's good going. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's your progress has been, I think a lot of us were surprised, honestly, because you were how much heavier on stage? Close to 10 pounds. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy, yeah. dude. And, and you were, and so I was talking with um, Brian Borstein about this and he was saying like, Oh, you know, I think it's cause he's so dialed in and everything. I was like, well, you are so dialed in, but also weren't you only like seven years into lifting at your last competition? So I have been lifting officially lifting since I was basically 16. Okay. And I'm now 31. Okay. So I've, I have actually been in the gym for a long time, but I'm not doing it like what Lyle McDonald, he, he kind of said, like, I can't remember what the term is, like properly, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and consistently. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, so he has the term somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you were in your 2017 competition, then, so technically you were already, you know, 10-ish years into it then. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's, it's always hard to know how long somebody's been lifting in terms of like, because some people are like, well, I was lifting for sports, right? Or I was lifting, but I was like half ass in it or something. Yeah. So, and that obviously plays into like, like when I talk about, you know, and I think Alberto had a, a post on this recently saying like, you know, the first five years are where you make most of the gains, but that's like, you know, your serious five years, you know, we all know people who have lifted for years and they haven't done anything, you know, and it's amazing how it's even, even if you're doing the right routine, the calories thing and, and the food is so important because I've tried the whole, like, I didn't call it a mini cut, but back in like 2011, when I was probably 15 pounds less muscle than I have now, I tried going from 170 up to 175 over, you know, two months and then down to 170 and then up to one. And I didn't go anywhere. I just kept yeah. trying to do that and nothing happened. So even if you're well below your potential, it still can just not result in anything, you know? That definitely happened to me because between 2014 to 2017, I didn't really gain any stage weight. Mm. I look better. I was a better bodybuilder. And this is what natural bodybuilders often talk about. Like you might be right. the same stage weight, but you look better. But I have gone from, I definitely look better this time round, significantly better versus 2017. So my off season this time round has been way more productive mm. and I'm further into it. And I think it's like you just said there, I just, some of the basic stuff I just applied better. Yeah. So the consistent calorie surplus, it's not something I was great at between 2014 to 2017. I stayed yeah. too lean. I span my wheels, just trying to maintain, just kind of training hard. I was kind of doing power building. I wasn't ultra specific towards bodybuilding. Whereas my off season after 2017, I was just like, right, let's just get this shit into yeah. gear. Kind of kicked me up the ass, kind of being like, all right, you've done better. You've done all right. 
but you can do better. Mm. Uh, and that's kind of what this off season has been as a case of just like dialing everything in, uh, being ultra specific towards bodybuilding, not getting and, and sticking to what I know is working for me and kind of the principles that I know make sense. Yeah. And along the way, individualizing it and learning that, that kind of what it means for me in terms of, I don't know, how many sets do I really need for this muscle group? Right. Am I really training to that RER that I'm meant to be training to on mm. this one? Right. And I just got much better at the process of being a, a proper bodybuilder during this off season.